<laughs> More speakers than audience members. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for those of you who came in person and uh, those of you tuning in to the webinar. Um, this is a CDS Exchange. Uh, we would like to put these on each month to talk about some of the important work being done around the department and by external organizations whose work directly impacts the department. Um, today we have the um, APU coming uh, through to give a presentation on accessibility and, and how uh, the new accessibility requirements are being integrated at the department. And so I wanted to give them a warm welcome and thank you. All right, thank you. So my name is Zaid Dominguez. I oversee the Policy and Forms Management Bureau. Uh, we oversee the Accessibility and Policy Unit who's currently collaborating with the Information Systems Division in order to address the accessibility um, effort for the department. Uh, we also have Rebecca McCann and Joseph Crack, uh, who will be able to provide some information regarding our recent update on this effort. Yeah, my name is Joe Crack, and I manager of the Accessibility and Policy Unit. Um, just as a quick background, I know we don't have a lot of time, just the, the legal requirements for accessibility, why it's so important, why we keep talking about it, and what it might happen if we don't uh, pay attention to it. Section 508 of the U.S. Rehab Act of 1973, Section 508 was added in 98 with some requirements for digital accessibility. California Government Code 1135 in 2003 basically said California will follow those requirements. So ever since 2003, we have been under the requirement to create documents and websites that are accessible. Um, that wasn't actually being done quite well. So uh, AB 434 was passed in October of 2017, requiring that all uh, the directors of departments and CIOs certify that all their web pages and web content documents that they have posted online do meet requirements for accessibility. Um, we have not met that, and so uh, we have been given an extension for May of 2020, which I will talk a little bit more about later. Sorry. Um, so what's covered by the rules for accessibility is that well, all, all, basically all electronic content is, is covered, not just web pages, but also any, any documents that are posted online, PDFs, Word, Excel, PowerPoints posted online as well as posted internally, and I know we're, at, we're going to address the, the public uh, uh, content first, but also internal content as well as anything that's not posted but distributed widely throughout the, the agency is going to be uh, is covered. So, so content uh, generated by CDS, uh, not uh, is, that we generate, and if we post anything from somebody else, from a third party. We, it has to be accessible as well. So if we get content from a third party that's not accessible, we shouldn't be posting it. We should not be requiring them to fix it. They are legally required to submit to us accessible content to post. Any vendor is required to uh, deliver us ex content that it meets accessibility requirements. So if it's not, we can kick it back to them and say, you need to send us stuff that's accessible. Um, I guess we, we shouldn't pay them because they are legally required to do that. We can help them. We, you know, here figure out how to do it. We can get them classes or get them training. But we really need to go back to nothing gets posted, no matter who generates it, on our on our websites. Um, so how do we reach full compliance? The first person we're going to have to speak to that is from uh, uh, ISD and uh, Rebecca McCain. We're going to talk about from the web angle about how we're going to be uh, ensuring compliance. <coughs> okay. I don't know where to stand, so I'm just going to like pick a spot and hope everybody can see me. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Rebecca McCann. I am with Information Systems Division, ISD, in case you are overwhelmed by acronyms. Um, I'm working with Lisa Speroni on the AB 434 compliance. Um, this is a very, very important, very large task ahead of us. Um, people need to access the information we have on our website, which is why it's there. But if they can't read it, it does them no good. So we need to make sure that both words and documents are available for them to read. And the largest is our documents. We have 57,000 documents online. That's a lot. 
And so what we're asking to start with is review all the documents. Um, ISD is working on providing you a list to make it a little bit easier, but go through, open the, the document. Does it, is it still needed? Is it relevant? Is it 20 years old and it's not needed any longer? Um, if it's not needed, get rid of it. Don't get rid of it, like delete it, delete it, because you know somewhere in historic somebody might need it, but it doesn't need to be on the website. Um, and if it's still needed, is it accessible? If it's not, it cannot be on the website until it is made fully accessible. Um, I think that was it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So um, what we have up next, um, for our next effort is you know, addressing new content. So just to kind of give everybody an idea of what is accessibility, um, and, you know, what we mean by it, um, so Joe put together this quick demonstration. It'll show you essentially what uh, a, a document that's not compliant um, and what, how it sounds like or looks like to, to those who are visually impaired. And then we'll compare it to what a truly you know, accessible document will look like and should look like in order to move forward. So part of the Edit page one, bold and home supportive okay. services. Heading level one needs assessment phase sheet. No bold. Heading level two, bold section A, recipient information. Table with six, row one, row. Edit. So basically this is, this would be a form, uh, if you were as trying to demonstrate, if you were, didn't know we're not a visual person, you had visual uh, disabilities, or maybe you're completely without vision, and you had to fill out one of our forms to receive services. Um, which is, you know, there's a lot of our uh, population out there that are suffering from visual disabilities, so they would come in and online try to sign up for services. And this is a form without being accessible, and this is how easy it would be. So I'm, like, I'm going to go to the form, and if you're in the room or online, you can tell me what information to put in here. Um, Edit. Blank. Anybody? Edit. Blank. So we're getting signed up for services right now. We're going to, you know. Cool. So, edit, blank. So this is sort of the quantity that you'd be in, uh, we're completely inaccessible. And it's, it's something that we, everything so far has in this world is being created by people who can see, visual people. And so we make forms with a nice clear lettering. Now we've increased the size of the font, so it's no longer six point font, but there's nice clear lettering and we're assuming well, visual people have no problem filling it out. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people who aren't visual that fill it out using um, online, and I have a screen reader installed to help people with visual issues, and yet still, I can't fill this form out because it hasn't been created to be accessible. Now, Desktop. to create this form in an accessible way, so what, what does it sound, how does it sound different if it's, how does it sound different if it was supposed to be accessible? A special director right. table. Yeah. Table. That was in the right order. Room. So, room. Room. We go back to the beginning. Recip case number edit. Blank. Recipient telephone number edit. Blank. So recipient telephone number. Recipient date of birth edit. Blank. Recipient date of birth. So now Blank. we know. Room. Recipient name edit. Blank. Okay. So we know now what document one slash one so, anyway. users GCraft desktop except connect notify MVDA MVDA menu. Exit exit okay. Okay button pressed. Set So just sort of a quick demonstration that was using a form. But you don't need forms to be accessible. All documents have to be accessible. If you had a heading, how to build them with styles instead of just making it bold and make it look like a heading. Because that's again, that's where the visual world that used to work when only visual people we thought were looking at, it, at our stuff. Now that visual boldness doesn't really matter to somebody who's using assistive technology. It actually 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 has to be a heading so they can use the keyboard and, and figure out their way around the document. Anyway, constructing documents to be accessible is not a difficult process. It's just a different process from what you're used to. Um, it becomes much easier when you start doing it over and over again. Anyway, 
So what we do in the accessibility policy unit, part of what we do is we have a lot of classes to train people uh, on how to do that. Um, we provide trainings. We have eight different classes right now. We have a list of them near the end we can show you. Uh, we provide consultation services. If you're working on a large project, there's way too much content being developed right now for the, uh, the small accessibility policy unit to work with you to make everything accessible. So what we've done is we've asked that each bureau at least to name one person as an accessibility representative. So they can have some expertise in your area. If you're working on a project, you work in my bureau and you're the accessibility rep. Is this, you know, is this accessible? And the goal is to start that process early on. I have a question. Yeah. I am a disability rep. All right. And I have not taken any of the training. So is there, I know you have the um, mandatory training coming up, but will you guys be offering um, like up speed? Like we, offer, more? we offer all, we offer, we have eight trainings. We offer them at least once every month. And oh, the beginning classes, the, the creating accessible documents okay. and accessible PDF, we offer them multiple times a month. Okay. So usually about once a week or once every other week, you're you will be able to take one of those classes and get started. Okay. Um, and then, so you have time if this has to be well, we also have, you know, because you have to be certified as an accessibility rep, yeah. we have to give you software. Okay. We have, and what we're going to talk about, you know, people take the class, maybe they never you put it in, into practice, and, and, you know, taking the class by itself does not necessarily mean you get to know a lot about accessibility. Yeah. We've developed a certification test, so it's going to take Yes, I've, I've read about it, or I sat through class, but can I do it? Uh, it's going to combine that knowledge as well as an exercise that we email you and you fix a, you know, a PDF or Word and, a, and an Excel document and send it back just to make sure that you have some proficiency in it. Um, there is a, 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 an access, a certification exam prep class. It's three hours. It covers the majority of what's in that beginning class as well as some PDF and also some Excel. So, um, I would just, i take, you know, the two classes and then do the certification class. And I know you're new and well, a lot of new people, so, you know, just as soon as you can is, is what we're trying to get. Um, and you will be a proud accessibility rep. So if, you know, like a 200-page annual report, and if you wait until, and it's, it has to be posted by Friday, if you wait until the Wednesday before, okay, we finally got final sign-off, we have to post it, oh, by the way, is it accessible? That's not going to take... It's not going to be up by Friday, okay? Because it's 200 pages, there's a lot of stuff in there, and you have to look at it. If you start in the process, hey, we're starting on a 200-page report today, it's doing four months, and the accessibility rep starts in right now, it's a structural thing. You can change the content. You can update it and have somebody sign off on it and add, no, I don't like the way this is worded, and change that. All the time, you're building the structure to be accessible. And that's the idea, is to build accessibility into it in the process. And then you get to that Wednesday before it's due. Maybe there's only two or three things you have to tweak. And yeah, then it can go up on time. So, so get accessibility involved early on. Um, that's why we're trying to teach everybody who has a keyboard rules about accessibility and making it available for people who will have more training like accessibility reps in the area to help people do that. Wait until the last minute. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, so we talked about that and the mandatory accessibility checks. Um, any other questions online or in the room? Nope. Okay. Um, we both want to talk about this? Or? Okay. Okay, so this is just a, a quick overview of what, how we're collaborating with uh, the Accessibility Policy Unit is collaborating with ISD on the uh, Sunday Bill 434 compliance. Uh, we're, we're meeting as frequently as, as needed. Uh, we set up some, some ongoing meetings. So what we're doing is discussing essentially the plan as far as identifying documents that are published on the internet. Um, we're also identifying representatives from every division that can help us go through all these documents and identify those who, that are a priority or those that are not needed. And once we identify those that are other priorities, we can uh, either set up a plan to remediate those documents that are not compliant. Um, uh, and our, our deadline now is May 2020. It was uh, the May 434 had a deadline of June 30th, um, but by July 1st we weren't there. But through the governor's office, it was extended through May 2020. Um, 
they were tackling external facing websites and documents of um, I mean, 2020. We want to you know, get past that. We're going to take a look at the internal documents or website as well. Um, we'll try to identify divisional representatives to help us you know, with this effort to identify which documents we need to do, which are important and which are not. That way we can at least take those that are important to mediate those. Um, and there'll be a lot more to come. We're still uh, collab you know, regrouping and identifying a plan. So uh, we will be messaging uh, the updates either through these type of exchanges or through other forms of communication. So uh, just be on the lookout for, for updates. Because they, they are developed. Yeah, I loved it. Great. Very good. So, so there is training available. As you brought up, APU, we have classes ongoing several times each month. Creating accessible documents, PDF accessibility, advanced PDF, there's a whole list of them coming up in Excel. Um, so, and as Zay just said, it's basically that there's two points to this point right now. We have to make May 2020. We missed July 1st. So now we have to hit May 2020. And our kid fooling around anymore. So 57,000 documents online. First, the first step is with ISDs is coming up with reps in each division to go through and go, content is relevant, not relevant. Because if we don't have to keep it anymore, we don't have to worry about accessibility, we're just going to take it down. Third party we content. Well, that's a different. That's not accessibility rep. That's a divisional. This is a different project. Oh, okay. Is it should we keep this stuff or shouldn't we? You know, yeah. So tying into that, the um, accessibility rep can help the people, but the division reps need to be the subject matter experts. They need okay. to know. You know, this document does not need to be online, and it could be the same person. That would be ideal, but more than likely, it's not. Okay. So, so we're guessing it's possible on any third-party content, you know, we can get rid of that. I think we're guessing that 57,000 number might even be cut in half just from the get-go from that certain project. And we are at a time frame, so I think we're looking at like, you know, hoping to have this, the results of that by, by September to say we can just pull these down, maybe link to this web page instead of having them on. Then we have a number to work with. Then we take that number, we look at vendors and say, can they help us maybe? Uh, to fix those documents, but we need a number before we get a contract to know how much you know how much it's going to cost. So the first step is, is sorting through what we're going to keep. We have to make sure it's accessible, and that's one process. The second process is every day we're continuing to post stuff online that's inaccessible. And that's what you come in as accessibility reps. Is we have to stop the bleeding. Nothing can be posted until unless it's accessible. And we have we have training in place. We have accessibility reps in place, and we're trying to get a certification in place. Right now, we still have to figure out, yeah, but how do people pay attention to that process and not put stuff anyway? Because it still could happen. We're doing spot checks and new stuff that's being posted. And you, even with all our efforts, about 60 some, 70 percent of them, we're still finding to have errors on the new stuff. So it's sort of a two-step process. There's the old, old stuff that was currently on there that we're, we have to figure out what you know what to fix and then fix it, and we have to make sure that nothing new goes out there that's going to be inaccessible. So it's a huge team effort that we have to that we have to do. Um, we have classes, accessibility policy units on our web page, on our internal web page. Um, we do spot checks to try and, and identify issues. We have workshops that we offer at least a couple times a month where you can just bring projects in, and the staff at the APU will be in a room, and you can just ask us questions and go through the process. You can do that anytime, but we have these workshops also. The next one is on July 30th. Um, the next slide is a, a list of all the class offerings that we have and titles um, that are available to you. And, um, and the next one is just contact information and any, any other questions, comments. Can you take a class as many times as you want? Oh, yeah, yeah. So They're free and you take them as many times as you want because sometimes it takes more than once. To you know, we were taking a couple months ago, and you just haven't put the process yet. Yeah, sir, definitely. You may not have the answer to this, but I know that a lot of department websites have been revamped. Um, they kind of got that. I mean, ED, I'll give EDD's one. You know, you, you, I don't know if you can pull it up, but um, it's kind of been revamped. Are we going to be revamping our department website again? 
I know we did it a few years ago. We did it a few years ago because of our time yeah. constraints and we only have until May. Mm -hmm. More than likely we're going to stay as we are. Mm -hmm. um, with our new director on board, um, I'm thinking in June, we have that conversation with her and say, hey, here's some other options. But we have a very, very short window, so I don't think we have time to sure. redo it again. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any uh, webinar questions coming in. Um, anything else from the crowd? So what happens if we are made really compliant? What happens? Our website gets shut down. Really going to shut it down? That was what was going to happen. We all shut it down. That was the threat. Yeah, that yeah. was really good. Really good. Yeah. It's a litigation risk to the state. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. huge. Right, and shutting down both. And we don't want to just shut down because we want to provide our services because we all want to do good work, but we have to meet the requirements, yeah. And so it is, I think this one is a really hard deadline. And what takes precedence on, I mean, you said that, that it was first passed in 98, right? That's a federal law. Right, that was a federal law in 98. And in 2003, California says, okay, we will follow suit. Now right. we're going to abide by that. So, does it look as so since 2003, all of our stuff has to be accessible? Yes. And so anything that's posted on our website from 2003 on needs to be accessible? Right, and that's one. So of when we look at letters pre-2003, right. they don't need to be accessible because there was nothing in place that made us make it accessible. I mean, it's a slippery slope here. Yeah. Like the, the Technically, chicken that is thing. true. However, we are going forward with being fully accessible. Gotcha. You know, if the document really, really, really needs to be up there, then let's redo it to make it accessible. If it happens to be a letter signed by, you know, some governor 20 years ago that we really need, then we would go to our director and say, hey, this needs to be on here, but it's not accessible kind of thing so, and go from there, but gotcha. we really want full compliance. So I'm going to throw an ACL from 98, which still is applicable today, yeah. we would make sure that it's accessible. Mm -hmm. um, if the calendar yes. still, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But legally, just saying, if, it got, if the push comes to shove and we need to cut well, a corner, or not cut a corner, but trim it down to, hey, let's, by May of 2020, everything from 2003 on is accessible. Right. Would that be. Just looking at workload and time on anything that if, if we had to do that. You got to think anything that's important enough for us to post regarding print services or, or or programs needs to be available to all citizens. Uh, so that it, this is a civil rights law, so we would have to make it to be accessible. But the question is, you know, I mean, a document five years old or older is it really really important to be there, or just we, we just dump it and have them have an email there, have the blur there saying if you need a, this type of document that's prior to. 2014, email us and we'll get it to you. Um, I mean that that's that's another way of winnowing out a lot of the content that we don't need um, to have up. I mean it's not being accessed like once every three years. I mean you know why do that? I don't you know. I mean the hardest thing are the county letters. They're going to be the most relevant for a longer period. Rebecca, are we going to look at a break for those, for those 57,000? Are uh, I, mean, I don't know. I'm going to. You know, we're looking at different ways, like how often we access service and that. But are we also looking at like the, I guess, the age of these? I mean, are those fifty-seven thousand? Are how many of these are from the eighties? You know, or how many of these are from the nineties? Are we breaking it down looking at that? Because I, I'm guessing a lot of the older ones we could probably just, you know, because I'm sure they've been updated with new ACLs or new codes and regulations from then to now. So on ISD's end, we can look at a document and see when it was created or mm -hmm. updated, but we need program and their expertise to go in right. and say, you know, yes, this document is 20 years old and it's not needed anymore. We've updated it with, you know, three other county letters. Right. Gotcha. So. Are you working with other state departments on this issue? Or have you been conversing with other state departments on how they're doing? and? Yeah, what the, approach they're doing. It's a community, like yeah, it's a community of practice started by the Department of Rehab that we're members of the attendees for 
um, and like there's discussion groups and like, trying to figure out how other people are handling the situation and what they're using. Um, we also have a separate interest group just for document people that we started here uh, with other departments involved. So we're trying to get ideas of what other people are doing and how they're handling it and uh, coming up with joint solutions to you know, see how we can best handle it. I mean, the Department of uh, the, the, um, Franchise Tax Board, well, a couple years ago, or 18 months ago, they just took everything down. And they, well, if they did some analytics and found out that 90% of the, 97% of the traffic came from about 3% of their thousand. So they said, well, I, well, I have it up there. So they took that 3% that people are actually interested in, you know, most of the current tax forms, they updated those, reposted those, and everything else they left off. Um, you know, that's what we're trying to do now is figure out, okay, what can we take off? Anything from a third party, if they, you know, they want, they want to post that maybe has some problems, technically they should give us it to be accessible stuff, but we're not going to post it. They're not going to fix it. We can say, and here's this, and there's a document from this third party, and here's a link. You know, <laughs> it's not, you know, they need to make it, yeah. So, I mean, things like that, we can get that number down. And who knows how many of that 57,000 are, are ghost documents, what we call old versions that still exist. You know, new, new versions have been posted, they're accessible. The old, old version is still accessible to bookmarking. And so, you know, some of that 57,000 might be duplicates that we can take down. But we have to sort through, it's a big project. So is it May 1st, 2020, or is it April 30th? May 1st. May 1st. Per perspective, I know when, right before we created the accessibility and policy unit, when we were first, when so when Joe was the Department of Rehab and we had contracted out with you to uh, address some of our documents, um, we had a meeting with the Department of Justice um, because they had just kind of completed this and they got uh, their website and all their documents accessible. Um, I don't know the numbers wise of our 57,000 how compared to what they had, but it took them 10 years to be in fully compliance. So we have eight months. So that's Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. We just need to be more efficient. <laughs> Which is why looking at a document and saying, hey, is it really needed? And just pulling it down yeah. is going to be the fastest way. And hey, one, one retired really didn't do it. So that's why I took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm curious of that because they, they did have a whole, well, they had a whole unit, they said like 12, 14 student assistants. Right. That's all they did. They came in for they, here's your list. This is all the documents, and then they sat there and they, you know, you needed all the documents. Right. And I'm curious if that's not an idea. Thinking of like with program when you talk about retiring intent, because there's going to be, you know, if you have a, we put a new analyst, a newly hired analyst, and put in a responsible, hey, go find out what documents are important. Right. And so I almost yeah. wonder if you put a team of retired annuitants who have that. Program knowledge. Yeah, of like, oh yeah, they remember this, and they, you know, hire them for six months or you're on the books, just go through. Maybe they don't have to do anything, but they go through and prioritize. Oh yeah, that's important. That's what was, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. work with existing management mm -hmm. or whatever. Say, hey, what was or some of the history behind it. That's a good idea because a lot of people aren't going to know. Yeah. I mean, even right. if you have been there a few years and you right. don't necessarily work, you know, in a particular program, you right. work in maybe, you know, like a central operations branch or like me, you know. I mean, yeah. that may be in CCLD, but I don't know all the documents that are on there and right. how, you know, who, how important they are. And how or why they, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So that really, I yeah. mean, it, the effort really needs to be stressed to each division and the program to say, like, you really need to look at these documents if you do not need them. Have them so those them. are the representatives that, that Rebecca's talking about, the ISD mm -hmm. representatives, program specialists. Right. Then programs going to have to identify their own specialists. Right. Like how, right. how, Mm -hmm. How special do you want the special? Like that? And then when they say, okay, these are the ones we have to keep, then the accessibility people come in or we do testing or we do that or it, right. and figure out, okay, now what, how do we fix these to keep the, to keep them up? Yeah. Okay, so we've been discussing, you know, what we call in nerd, you know, group meetings, we, we call that, you know, catching up. What we're trying to do to catch up and be compliant. <laughs> the other effort is keeping up. So we mentioned a little quick blurb on like uh, the how we're posting new content. So currently, we have about 300 what we call DNN users. DNN is the, the name of the platform system that we use to publish all our external websites and documents. There's about 300, I call them basically webmasters. So about 300 webmasters throughout the department that have been granted permission. So 
if any, any of you out there uh, are a webmaster, are a DNN user, uh, we're going to be taking a look at that whole model because there's about 300 that will really need to be part of this solution. They'll, we're looking at some solutions, some plans, some proposals, and we're working with our exec staff and just trying to suggest like perhaps we're going to have to go back and recertify all 300. And those who are really they're not needed, you know, they'll just, you know, they won't be part of that group or they'll find someone else who is knowledgeable, is taking some accessibility classes or taking the, uh, the new uh, accessibility certification exam that we just recently put together. So we will be taking a look at that whole model, that whole structure of 300 users. Do we need as much? Maybe we keep, you know, 200 or whatnot, or whatever the solution is. We are taking a look at that. So if you're out there and you're DNN user, or you know you're DNN users, um, know that you know, we will be you know, revisiting that whole structure. So to help the department eventually be, com um, be compliant or publishing compliant uh, documents instead of just keep going through the motions and, you know, on, like, you know on, on the back end to catch up, like we're just going in circles. We're just we're publishing and then we're re remediating. We're publishing nothing, then it's compliant and we're remediating. So, we have to eventually catch up with that cycle and, and put a stop to the. Uh, we quit chasing our tail. Right. Chasing our tail. So, we remediate two and we put one up that's not. We right. remediate two, we put one up that's not. And, so it's and now that, that whole model that we're trying to the DNA users, we're probably going to address that sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, we have some ideas that we're going to be uh, proposing pretty soon. So, we'll put that out there as well. Is DNA going to be replaced? Uh, yes. We're, I, uh, we're, um, we are going with WordPress. WordPress. Yes. So we'll be working on all of the content online, not just the documents. Now the content has to be uh, made sure that it's fully accessible. And there's a bunch of technical terms that we could do, but is that pretty much what I got here too? Is that around May-ish? Is that we're going to transition over? Is that where the everything has to be done by May? No, no, I thought with WordPress. Mm -hmm. So that'll be okay. That'll be. So we won't have it till next year. Um, we're starting it now. Um, we'll get it built and then we'll migrate the content over and then have users start going back through and verifying it. Because we did a great endeavor a few years ago mm -hmm. when we really hashed out the content and we took a couple years to do it. So a lot of the content is still good. Uh, it just needs to be cleaned up. So then people are, are they going to have to be trained on WordPress or? Yes. Yeah. So. Which is where they said, you know, we're going to, not all those people are going to have a WordPress right. license. Oh, because now it's going to be a license. Well, it's okay, a perfect. license with DNN now. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And, um, webinar question. What are the specific classes needed to work on the website report? I don't know. The website. Website report. What is that? What do you mean? So if you're posting a report to the website, then you're going to need to go through the accessibility courses that Joe offers. If you're posting a document, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, you should take the accessibility classes from the Accessibility Policy Unit, creating accessible documents, Excel, those classes. Mm -hmm. If you are, yeah. if you are um, working on the web pages and the design and posting stuff, you probably need to get training from ISD about how to do that without messing up the code, making it ugly and kind of inaccessible. Or are they asking what do you do with the website reports that we can get? Like, right. If, you, if it's a website report about you, these documents need to be fixed and the issues with the web pages, that's an I, ISD is working themselves on fixing all those pages. Um, and then, of course, they'll be working on the new WordPress pages. So uh, those will be done. Uh, if you receive uh, accessibility issue issues reports that's associated with a particular document, that's from the Accessibility Policy Unit, and then you would take the, the classes that we offer, and that would give you an, enough knowledge to fix those. Do you have a specific question on the report that you have? Then um, email the Accessibility Unit or Lisa or myself, and you know we'll be able to give you your exact specific. Yeah. Here's our contact. <laughs> Easy. That asker says thank you. Oh, our pleasure. Anything else? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause.
I want to thank everybody who showed up, all of you, this entire room full of people. Believe me, there are tons of them. And um, everyone who tuned in live for the webinar, um, we put these on again every month. Next month, we have a presentation from the Disaster Services Bureau talking about um, the response here at CDSS to the California wildfires. Be sure to sign up for that if you haven't already. And thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Julian. People stay in the back, careful as you go out. <laughs>